Okay, since this is the first time we've used Excel Miner, I'm going to go over it a little bit more detail than I normally would. So, I go to Icon, uh, download the file, uh, Toyota Corolla. And I have this in, a, in my um, own directory that is uh, for the class. Um, double click it. It's going to bring up Excel uh, 2010. Then I'm going to go over to the far right here. You should see this, if it was installed correctly, um, the Excel Miner, you should see it on the far right. And everything should be um, in color here. If it's, if it's in gray, that means it was not installed correctly. Okay, so we have the, the data here. And um, the columns are kind of small. So I'm going to do what I would normally do in Excel, which is make the columns bigger. Okay, so of course the the the, the top the header um, is here, but I don't really know what these mean. So I'm going to go look at the uh, variables here, the data dictionary, right? And um, I'm going to make this. Um, I'm going to format this as a table. Okay. I want to put these in order here. So see what see what I'm looking at. Look it up a little bit easier. Okay, so in this particular problem, we're trying to predict a price. So to make this easier, once again, I'm just going to um, put this in color. And we have the age here. I assume this is the age of the um, age of in months of the car. We also have um, airbags. These are dummy variables um, here. They've been encoded as so. Um, if a, a driver airbag is included, it would be a 1, otherwise it would be a 0. Um, number of gears, um, horsepower. So uh, one of the first questions it says is, um, uh, let's explore the data using um, a matrix plot in, in which um, pairs are uh, correlated. So to do that, I'm going to go back over to Excel Miner, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to highlight the uh, information. Okay. Okay, I've highlighted all the data uh, here. And um, so then I'm going to say explore. I'm going to say chart wizard. And I'm going to say a scatter plot. And then I'm going to say next. And here, what it's asking is, what variables do you want to include in the chart? Okay. Since a scatter plot is looking at continuous variables, um, I'm going to make sure I know what the continuous variables are before I continue on. So I'm going to uh, look all the way at the top here, and and what are we looking at here? Okay, price is continuous, um, you know, age, um, the months, manufacturer months. Um, Manufactured year? No, no, not not year. Uh, looks like the amount of kilometers that we have. Um, looks like CC here. This would also be um, relevant. Horsepower. Okay. Oh, and the guaranteed period. You know here. Now some of these might be um, categorical. Yeah. But we're just going to go ahead and, and, and um, treat this as if it's just a regular continuous variable. OK. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say chart wizard. I'm going to say a scatter plot. And um, so what are we going to choose here? We're going to choose the price. We're going to choose the age, we said. Um, oh, kilometers. Let's choose the weight. I'm going to choose the horsepower, the tax, um, CC, and the guarantee period. Guarantee period. Okay, so that's finished. It might take a little bit of time here, I've noticed. Okay, I'm going to double click this, uh, make it larger. So what you're going to see here is um, 
just scatter plot matrix. Um, you know, you, you know how to read this. It's um, the price here would be on the y uh, coordinate, and um, let's say kilometers would be on um, the uh, x uh, axis. And so it, it's asking here, what is um, is saying what is correlated? So we would look to see, okay, what's 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 correlated here? It looks like price and, and age of the vehicle would be uh, correlated. It's negatively correlated, you know, right? As the age of the car gets older, the price uh, drops. You know, that makes sense. And you're going to go through and you're going to say, okay, what else is um, uh, correlated? Uh, the price and the, and the kilometers driven, and that's also negatively correlated. You're going to go through and you're going to look to see what, what all is uh, correlated. I'll, I'll let you do that, though. And um, so then... I'm just going to close this down, and it's asking us if you want to save the chart window, enter a name. So I'm going to call this thing uh, matrix plot. Let's save this. Okay. Uh -huh. And I've noticed it takes a while sometimes, but it will save it at the bottom here. Okay, also, it says to make um, dummy variables out of um, some of this data. So we have, or it's, it's calling it binary variables, which is a dummy variable. Um, fuel type and metallic, all right? So we have fuel type here. And um, we're also gonna say metallic. Metallic rim? No. Well, let's just do uh, fuel type at the moment. So for this, I'm going to say um, transform, and it's going to say uh, transform uh, categorical uh, values um, to uh, create dummy variables. Right. And right now, I'm just going to do fuel type. You can do the other one, metallic, later. Um, variables to be factored. Okay, fuel type, and then say yes. Okay. And so here it has uh, created dummy variables uh, f for the fuel type. So we have uh, fuel type. Is it C and G? Is the fuel type C and G? Yes or no? If it's yes, it's going to be a 1, which we have one here. And then we also have another one, another dummy variable for diesel and, and petrol. Now we have, um, it looks like we might have four um, variables here, um, different um, different types of, of fuel. You remember how this works? Um, if you have a whole bunch of data, A, 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 this is just an example, B, B, um, C, um, you know, D, D, C, and A. This is our data. You know, here we're going to create dummy variables out of it. So let's just call this dummy A, dummy B, and dummy C and dummy uh, D. Is dummy is dummy A uh, present? Uh, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Is B present? One, one. Yes. Is C present here? Yes. Here it is, and here it is. Well, is D present? Yes, yes. Okay, but you know, in reality, we don't really need uh, four. Um, um, attributes to describe the um, uh, four different types. You know, we we can really just delete this uh, D variable because if it's not present, then we know it's going to be D, and so you know all these others would be filled in with with zero, right? So this is just kind of an example. So we don't even really need this here because we know if it's um, if all zeros are present, then it's got to be a D. So we need one less than what we really have, the number of types that we have. OK, so the example uh, continues to ask some questions. You can do this on your own. It's also asking to um, partition the data into a, a training, a validation, and a test set. Uh, the training set is comprised of 50%, validation 30%, and the test uh, 20%. So this is um, this is partition, 
but this is partition for time series and we're not gonna we're not gonna do that at the moment you can see this little clock here so that means partition for time series it's actually the second one here the second partition so we're gonna say um, we can either choose or over sampling but for this particular problem we're gonna say a uh, standard uh, partition what variables do we want to include um, let's just include everything we got so many I'm just gonna go start at the top go all the way to the bottom one hold shift left click let go of shift I'm gonna add everything there okay so specify the percentages um, 50%, 30%, and 20%. So what this is going to do is it's going to randomize the data. It's going to uh, select 50% of the data uh, kind of randomly. That's going to be the training set. 30% uh, of the data randomly. Um, what's left over is a validation and 20%. Um, uh, the remaining 20% is going to be the test set. Now by setting the seed here, it will always come up with the, with the same results. So by having um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, everybody should have the, the exact same even though it's random, um, pseudo-random, everybody should have the same 50% uh, unless you unclick this and then it's going to be kind of purely random. But um, keep it at the default here. So, okay. Okay, so this is it. And we can see here the, uh, the training data, the validation data, which here, look at, it's 20 here look at validation and it skips all the way down to 738 um, and then uh, test data so then we can use this to make a model